Oh, hello there. I was just brushing up on my parliamentary procedure. You can never know too much, you understand. What's parliamentary procedure, you ask? Well, let me take you on a journey. A journey to the ASU Dub Student Senate, where official student opinion is formed. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to Senate. This is where the magic happens. Senate meets every Tuesday night here from 5 to 7, and we would love for you to join us. Senate can be an amazing place to contribute to campus-wide conversations surrounding the UW community. That being said, it's difficult to express your opinion if you don't know how to follow along. Senate is conducted entirely in Robert's Rules of Order, a set of rules that helps us to guide meetings smoothly. Parliamentary procedure also ensures that even if you disagree with popular opinion, your voice will always be heard. In parliamentary procedure, every action starts with a motion. We're always moving things to make sure we're always moving forward in our conversations and our agenda. A motion can take many different forms, each serving a unique purpose. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the motions you'll see during Senate. The main motion, the topic of conversation, takes the form of a piece of legislation, often a resolution. A resolution is simply a document that proposes what UW students think about a particular issue, including the evidence and explanations for why they think it. Anyone can submit a resolution on our website at senate.asudub.org. You can view all the legislation considered by the Senate under the Legislative Database tab. The subject of a resolution can really be anything. We have considered everything from dining plans to divestment. When we consider a resolution, before we vote to pass or fail it, we have a system in place to make it better through changes. The way we handle these actions regarding the main motion, or the resolution, is through subsidiary motions. Each of these motions requires a second. If there's no objection, they can be adopted by unanimous consent. If there is an objection, many motions can be debated. Most require a majority vote to pass. Other motions require a two-thirds majority. As a rule of thumb, if the motion limits debate, two-thirds is required. The most common of these is the motion to amend. You can move to amend in a few different ways. First, you can move to strike something, for example, hoops. Also, you can move to insert something, like dogs. Or, all at once, you can move to strike coots and insert in its place dogs to read, go dogs. You can even move to amend an amendment, for example, to strike dogs and insert huskies. But, we only go two layers deep before things get too complicated. Another important way of handling the main motion is through the motion to postpone. You can postpone the consideration of a resolution definitely, meaning to a specific time like 6.30. If you want to stop considering a resolution altogether, you can move to postpone it indefinitely. The motion we use to refer a resolution to a committee after first readings is the motion to commit, or more informally, to send a resolution to one of our legislative committees. If you want to limit the time the Senate spends discussing a resolution, you can move to limit the time of debate. Tell a specific time, or say for 15 minutes. If the time limit is too short, you can move to extend the time of debate to allow for further conversation. Finally, to stop debate and vote on final passage of a resolution, we move the previous question. This requires a two-thirds vote because it ends debate. Now while these conversations are going on, there are other motions that are important to the meeting as a whole, and must be dealt with regardless of our place in conversation. These situations utilize incidental motions. An incidental motion that occurs at the end of every meeting is the motion to adjourn. This motion can be made at any time, but we generally like to finish the current topic before adjourning. If someone or something is preventing you from hearing or participating, you can rise to a question of privilege at any time. The speaker will hear your question and attempt to resolve the issue before continuing with our business at hand. If Senate leadership is doing their job, we should follow the scheduled agenda fairly well. However, if anything is forgotten from the agenda, any senator may call for orders of the day, alerting the chair to a diversion from the plan of action. If you forget any of the rules we've just taught you, you can make a parliamentary inquiry for clarification. You can also call a point of order if you know a rule is being broken and you want the speaker to make a ruling on the issue. Another useful motion that comes up frequently is the motion to suspend the rules. With a two-thirds majority, the Senate can decide to divert from the rules that exist in its bylaws. This occurs often, as there are many situations with outcomes that are difficult to predict, and the rules that were intended to ensure efficiency would only serve to slow the process down. In this case, we suspend the rules in order to move along quickly. 
So, how does this all work in the context of a Senate meeting? Now that you've sipped the sweet elixirs of Parley Pro, how about we dive into a Senate meeting? The way every Senate meeting begins is with a setting of the agenda of the day. This is an opportunity for every Senator to decide what we will discuss that day. Next come the reports from the Senate leadership. The Senate leadership consists of three elected positions and one hired administrative assistant. The Speaker presides over Senate meetings. The Vice Speaker serves as the Parliamentarian to the Senate and the Liaison to the Board of Directors. The Membership Coordinator is responsible for all affairs concerning Senators, membership, and voting rights. The next item on the agenda is Board Member of the Week. This is an opportunity for you to get to know who your board members are and what they do. We will also often feature an ASCW Entity of the Week. That way you can learn about the Association's many functions. Next comes New Business. When a resolution is first submitted, the Senate will read it and ask informative questions during the first readings. At the following meeting, under Old Business, the Senate will amend and improve the resolution during second readings. If we adjourn before finishing first or second readings, the item will be considered first thing at the next meeting under Unfinished Business. Between first readings and second readings, we have committee meetings. Committee meetings are an opportunity to make amendments in a small group setting. To make it simple, first readings, ask questions, get answers. Committee, break it down, make it better. In second readings, debate and fine tune. After a resolution is passed, it is sent to the Board of Directors for final approval. The Board can choose to send a resolution back to Senate. However, if they choose to approve our resolution, our words will be acted upon and they can lead to impressive changes on and off campus. If you have questions about parliamentary procedure, feel free to raise your hand and use that handy dandy parliamentary inquiry. The vice speaker will then wake up from his or her nap and help you out. We want everyone to be included in our conversations and we hope to hear your voice as well. If you're interested in becoming a senator or want to learn more about the ASU Dub Student Senate, head over to senate.asudub.org. Remember, we meet Tuesdays from 5 to 7 p.m. and I hope to see you there.